Now, um, I've slightly glossed over the last bit because I said at the beginning I always think that um, the interesting part of the story is the getting started bit. But I'd like to tell you one more story which captures two thoughts that might, you might find helpful. And my first is to not be scared of asking advice. We've been asked, we've, we've actually asked many people for their advice along the way, and I find people quite like giving it. Um, in our very early days, before we got into Sainsbury's, we faced a very difficult and very fundamental question. And that was, should we continue to manufacture or should we work with a manufacturing partner? The received wisdom of some of the leading brands that were a few years ahead of us was to focus on sales and marketing um, and work with a manufacturing partner. Basically, not to invest in stainless steel, but leave the manufacturing to the experts. And we had heard about a guy called William Kendall. And William was well known in the food industry and had built two really successful food businesses. The first one was New Covent Garden Soups and the second was Green and Blacks. And we managed to get hold of him, track him down, and he kindly agreed to meet us. And we explained that our major concern. And that was really that the big um, pie manufacturers who we might consider working with were highly mechanised and couldn't make our artisan pies and put them down through their production lines. And secondly, if we did try to persuade them to make them, we didn't feel that they would make them the way that we wanted them to make them. But William's advice was so clear and firm, and he said, rubbish, you can outsource anything Actually, I think he said something a bit stronger than rubbish, but um, he made us think very hard. And in the end, we went against William's advice. Um, and we found that making and baking our own pies, quiches and tarts has been absolutely one of the key elements of our brand and fundamental to our success. So my first thought is to ask advice, because you don't necessarily need to take it. And the second thought is not to rule out manufacturing at Higgity, we do two things. We manufacture and we're building a brand. And at times, this has been really painful because so often we have um, been distracted. We've been kind of trying to focus on a marketing opportunity, but then being distracted by, oh, we're about to run out of butter and flour. So it, it, it isn't an easy one, but there are some real upsides um, to manufacturing. And I think these include you will really know your product and your brand can really speak with our uh, um, integrity. You'll create jobs and we found that we've loved doing that. You'll be really adding value and you can reap the rewards of that. And lastly, we believe that there are less and less areas of the supermarket where there's room to carve out enough margin simply by being a brand. So I'd leave you with an encouragement to really properly consider making your own stuff because it might not be as hard as you think, and you might find it really rewarding. So that's me. Well, obviously, a lot of small food producers start off making the product themselves and selling the product themselves at festivals or markets. When do you know, or how do you know, when to make the leap to go to production <laughs> somewhere bigger? Yeah, OK. James? Unlike Camilla, I, I mean, we, we, yeah, we did have manufacturing, and that was Moss's problem. It wasn't my problem. And, and um, I think it's very, very difficult to be a good brand and to be a good manufacturer at the same time because manufacturing is a full-time thing, and it completely absorbs you, and actually running a brand and selling to the supermarkets is pretty full-on as well. Mm. Um, I was lucky, so we basically split the business. And, um, but I, I think it's difficult. I, I would, uh, like William Kendall, I would say, you know, go and find someone else who can manufacture it for you. Um, and uh, sorry to contradict you, but manufacturing is a huge headache. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of things go very pear-shaped quite quickly. Uh, but I've got a lot of respect for what you've done, but I, I would advise people strongly to go and find someone else to do it if they can. Is, is your success on the manufacturing side because you, between yourself and James, you split the responsibilities in the business? 
Um, it's James, my husband. Yeah. Um, yes, not this not James. Not this James. Yeah, yeah. he is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's sitting out there. Um, um, possibly, but I think, I think what I would say in answer to your question is that... Um, I, I, I don't think there is this magic moment where it's the right time to take it from the kitchen table to um, uh, to kind of full scale uh, production. Uh, how, uh, if that if that was your question, I think what I think is that um, it's about the ambition. It's about where you want to be, and it's about having um, Luke's touched on it, not not running out of money. It's highly highly capital intensive, and so if you're going to do it and you're ambitious, and you're going to, to, to really drive volume, then you need to go after it and go after it properly. So I'm passionate about manufacturing, particularly here in the UK, and so I'm going to be banging the drum for it. But I think that you, you need to know it's going to cost. Now, if you're, not, if you're not up for that cost, then perhaps it is right to go and find somebody else who's prepared to take the risk and, 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 and manufacture for you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.